Chip in North Carolina. Hi, Chip. Hey, Eddie. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I I just wanted to get your thoughts on the Exit 111 Festival, what you thought about it, and who you thought stole the show for you. Were you there, Chip? Did you go? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was there. I was there from Thursday until Monday. Well, I I loved it. I loved the diversity in it. Obviously, sat, the Saturday night of it was pretty darn cold if you were there. Uh, the guys in oh, Def yeah, Leppard were wonderful to me and let me sit in their trailer and gave me some whiskey and some hand warmers. So that was uh, that was tough, though, man. They played in about 38 degrees Saturday night there in, in, uh, in Manchester, Tennessee. But the weather overall, I mean, there was really no major rain or any sort of major heat. I, I heard a week or two earlier it was super hot there, so I'd, I'd trade out the cold for the hot any day. But uh, I, I loved it. I loved the diversity in the lineup. I loved Slayer and Skinner, the whole gamut of rock and metal acts being represented. I thought that's something that made it very, very unique. I don't know if they're going to do it again. They're not even sure if they're going to do it again yet. It's being discussed. Literally got a note about it seconds ago with the folks that I dealt with there. But run by a great company, great people, and uh, everybody seemed to have a great time. I know the attendance numbers were not what they wanted, but I think that's a byproduct of it being a first-year festival and people still figuring it out, and also a byproduct of the fact that we're just going to start seeing a lot of, and that is there's just so many music events. That weekend of Exit 111, that same weekend, in California there was Aftershock, and in Texas there was Austin City Limits. I mean, we have more music festivals than ever before, and just people can't do it all. So I think we're going to see some sink and some swim, and I don't know what the future of Exit 111 is. As as uh, somebody that really loved what they went for in the booking of it, I certainly hope it continues, and selfishly I'd love to continue hosting it. I just don't know what the future your plans are for it yeah it was fantastic uh, it was great the crowd was great i mean everybody was just so chill and there were no issues we camped there for four nights and everybody was just there to have a good time there was no issues whatsoever and that's the first show i've ever been to where i didn't see anything uh stupid yeah I'll tell you i tell you uh, what chip great. i'll tell you what not all the crowd was the fans there were wonderful. They were really into it. I mean, having been out there on the stages, and I did my best to get around to the three stages, I, I couldn't see everything. It's just impossible with everything going on and my personal schedule with what I needed to do. But I know when I go out on a stage and intro bands or make announcements, and I can feel just like an artist can instantly if it's a indifferent crowd or a crowd that's really, really into being there and the event. And I can tell you the vibe I got off of that crowd just from what I was doing were people that were really excited and into the fact that there was a rock festival like that happening. Yeah, it was awesome. If you didn't catch Fever 333, I'd never heard of them, and they blew me away. They were my favorite act of the whole the whole weekend. I did see them, Chip, and I've seen them before, but my problem with them is is that they are clearly, transparently playing to backing tracks. They they don't even have a bass player, and they have bass in their music. There's vocals, and there's people not near microphones. I mean, they're not even trying to hide it. They literally are th they they literally have uh they don't even have a bass player did you notice that i no i did i did but I, just the energy of the whole set i mean i just thought their energy was great and i'd never seen them before but yeah 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 i i i hear you thank you chip for the call i mean it's it's a very high energy rage against the machine like delivery that that band has but I, I'm sorry, I can't do the, the tracks thing, man. I, I can't. And you know, if you listen to me on a daily basis or on volume, it is a huge issue for me right now. Now, the thing about a band like Fever 333 is they're, they're completely transparent about it. They literally do not have a bass player. The bass guitar is on a track. They're not trying to hide it or even pretend. Most bands try to fake it when there's all this instrumentation or vocals on tracks. So to their credit, they're not even trying to hide it. I don't know why they don't get a bass player. 
I don't know if it's a financial thing or it's not, but I don't get the bands. It's like, oh, we only have two guys, and then the rest we're just going to play to tracks. Like, why is this? Isn't live supposed to be live? So I've never quite understood that, and I like what they do, and I like the energy they bring, but I also would like them to be a truly live band. If you're going to talk about a band being great live, to me that constitutes more than just jumping around, more than just putting on a big show. It constitutes actually playing live. That, to me, is the most important thing. But to that band's credit... They're not trying to fake it. They come out there with no, there is no bass player. So at least they're transparent about it, but it stuns me how many people today will go to a live show and be like, yeah, it wasn't live, but it was cool. I loved it. This is Ken in New Jersey. Hi, Ken. Hey, Eddie. How you doing today? Good, thanks. Hey. I know you were talking about uh, going to see some of UFO shows. I guess the one night there was Last in Line and the other night there was Bloister Cult. And I'm guessing uh, Halloween night with Bloister Cult are probably opening and Bloister Cult headlining. Do you know that? I don't. Fact? Actually, I don't know that. I, you are 100% right that here in, in, well, in Manhattan, you've got Sony Hall, you've got Last in Line who are absolutely opening, but they do an hour set. Vivian told me, because I saw Last in Line show I hosted with them in Oklahoma like a week ago. Last in Line is doing an hour and they'll do half DO stuff and half original and then UFO will come out and play, you know, after obviously. The show they're doing with BOC, I don't know who's closing that night. Something tells me it's probably UFO. I, I don't think that UFO is is going on first in any situation because UFO is on what kind of like they're calling a, basically a farewell tour. So I think because of that, I, I got a feeling that they're going to be closing all the shows. Well, that, that's what I would have thought. But checking some of the set list, it seems the other way because Boys to Call to an encore. UFO is doing a little shorter set, not much shorter, but two or three songs. But you know, it's Halloween, it's New York, it could be different. I didn't know if you, you know, knew for sure. Has you UFO and Bloister Cult to played together on another in another city on this tour? Yes, they've played on a bunch. Because I've been checking to where I was going to go, because I was supposed to be away for Halloween, and it didn't work out, unfortunately, so I want to go do something. So I'm thinking of going to do that. And so I've been kind of checking, and yeah, it's kind of been alternating. Armor Saint did some, Last in Line did some, and Bloister Cult actually... There with Boyster Colt. Penn's Peak, right. Now, the other shows they played with BOC, who who went on first? Do you have a listing? Well, that's what I'm saying. It didn't say it, but UFO is not. I don't want to give away songs so people don't know. They're not doing their full set. They're doing like 13 songs instead of 16 and not doing an encore, and Boyster Colt is doing an encore. Mm. So that was why I presume that. But New York is weird because Boyster Colt's probably pretty big in New York, but so is UFO. Yeah, Ken, that's a great question, and I want to make sure that they are closing and have as much time. Nothing against BOC. Thank you, Ken, for the call. I, I, you know, I like BOC as well, but not like I like UFO. So I don't want to be in any situation where I'm at a UFO show and they're on first and have to end by a certain time because they will add a song or two. I mean, I've been to plenty of UFO shows where the crowd is so into it, Phil will call something out and they'll add a song or two at the end. I want to make sure it's 100% their show if I'm going to see UFO, and I don't know how that shakes out with BOC. Clearly with Armored Saint, clearly with Last in Line, those are opening acts in that situation. From Lucas, who is in Colorado, welcome, Lucas. What's going on today? Um, not much. I was wondering how you feel to doing in rehab. Well, Lucas, we don't know. I mean, when most of the time when people go into a rehab, a lot of times they keep it private and they don't even tell people that sure. they're in rehab. Uh, the fact that he went in and they were transparent about it, I think, is great to let the fans know what's going on. But it's not the type of thing that we get or anybody, for that matter, gets uh, reports about. Yeah. And I'm excited for them to start touring again. I hope they come to Colorado. Well, Lucas, for your sake, uh, and thank you, Lucas, for the call. You sound like a very young fan. I hope you get a chance to see Metallica if you haven't already, and I certainly hope you yourself are never in rehab. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you, Lucas, because <laughs> you sounded like a younger fan. 
Um, keep yourself out of rehab, all right? 